Side to side, and absolutely do not hold anyone up in the air like Simba. There's no music, there's no musical chairs. You guys are all winners of the seat you're in. Congratulations! Oh, another quick note, my friends, as we pass through the reserve, please remember that we are the visitors here, but this is the animal's home. So we do ask that we keep those voices down low. Please be sure to use those inside voices as we pass through the reserve. No calling, whistling, or shouting out to the animals as a courtesy to them and those around you. I don't want to make any loud noises that are likely to scare the animal away from the truck. Speaking of those animals though, if you look above your head, you'll see our animal spotting guide. I'll give you an idea of what animals we hope to find while out on the reserve today. Now, of course, we're not guaranteed to find every single one of those animals, but I'll certainly do my best to get us as close to as many as we can. If you'd like to take photos, feel free. Just 
loves to have those cameras set to an action sport or live mode as that'll guarantee your best quality of photo. Of course, we're not always able to stop for every animal that we're going to see out here today. We're not always able to stop for long. Of course, the animals do not always stop and pose for us. Just make sure to hold on tight to any of those belongings, especially cameras if you are leaning to take photos. As the roads out here can get really bumpy. Unfortunately, anything that falls over the side of the truck won't be able to be grabbed right away. It will have to be returned to you later. So make sure to hold on tight to any belongings. And with all that out of the way, we are off and starting here in the Aturi Forest. Now, animals of the Aturi sometimes be a little tricky to see. They make use of natural camouflaging. That natural camouflage helps them to better blend into their environment making use of the dense vegetation around them. Animals like the okapi over here to the right. Now, okapis have that striped pattern there on their hind legs. It leads many people to believe that the okapi is closely related to a zebra. Actually, the only relative to the okapi is going to be a giraffe. I know, kind of coming out of left field there. But giraffes and okapis actually share very similar skull structures as well as long prehensile tongues. In fact, an okapi's tongue is long enough for them to lick their own eyes and ears. Coming up here on this next hill to our right, you'll see a group of bongos. Bongos are also known as ghosts of the forest for how silently they can move through the thick vegetation. But those horns turn backwards actually help them in navigating through the dense underbrush. Back here on the left, along that rock wall, you're going to see the back side of a black rhino. Black rhinos are unfortunately poached out in the wild for their horns. Many people falsely believe that a rhino's horn contains some medicinal properties. Really no more medicinal than your very old fingernails. However, here on the right, these two tan animals looking at us from the bush, these are the greater kudu. For the greater kudu, only the males will have horns. So the ones you see there, you can tell, are female. Coming up here on the left in this next clearing, you're going to see some black and white birds. Those are saddle-billed storks. Looking for that yellow saddle shape that's right there on their beak. Now standing at their full height, they can be about five feet tall. You can tell male and female apart by looking at their eye color. So males have dark brown eyes and females have bright yellow. But with that, my friends, we are off. We're going to be heading down to the Safi River. As we head down to the Safi River, go ahead and keep your eye out on that water line. So just may be able to spot a hippo or two. Hippos themselves can be a little tricky to see. They spend a lot of their time underwater. And hippos being able to hold their breath for about eight minutes at a time. It's actually not uncommon to catch a hippo sleeping underwater. Just like how we breathe naturally in our sleep, a hippo will naturally float to the surface whenever they need to catch breath. Also down here on the right, these large white birds here are pink-backed pelicans. Named for a pink color they turn during their mating season. Where that color will start to come in underneath their wings and along the base of their legs. Over here on the left though, just behind that island, you can see a whole group of hippos. Hippos are one of those lucky animals that give fun group names. So a group of hippos all together is going to be called a bloat. So behind that island there, we can see a floating bloat of hippos. So hippos will stay in the water as a way to keep cool. When above water though, they can regulate their body temperature in a way similar to us in that a hippo will sweat. Now their sweat comes out a bit oilier than ours. Also comes out bright red. If you look towards that waterfall there in the back, it looks like the water down there just might be a little bloated as well. Also down here on the left in this next ravine here, you'll see the Nile Crocodile. 
Anile crocodiles can grow to be 16 feet long and up to 500 pounds, making them the largest crocodilians in Africa. <laughs> are still very small. The parents will even carry them around in their jaws as well, getting them quickly and safely place to place, kind of like a well-fortified minivan. Well, coming up here on the right-hand side, we're coming up to a baobab tree. Now, a baobab tree is also known as an upside-down tree. Now, taking a look at it, it's a real head scratcher how it got that name. But a baobab tree will look like that for about nine months of the year doing so without its leaves to better conserve water there in the trunk. Now the trunk of a baobab tree is made of a spongy material and that spongy material allows it to hold thousands of gallons worth of water right inside the tree trunk itself. In fact many animals out on the savanna know that if other water sources <laughs> run dry they can always come up to a baobab tree as an additional source of water. As we make our way down the hill into the wide open savannas we can already see residents here on the reserve, the Maasai Giraffe. Also back here in the right hand corner you can see a herd of wildebeest. Wildebeest are some of the most densely migratory animals. So they can actually move in herds of about one and a half million. Now the giraffes here on the reserve are the Maasai Giraffe. You can tell them apart from other types of giraffe due to the more irregular shaped spots that they have. Now each spot pattern is going to be unique to each individual as unique as a human fingerprint. Now giraffes will spend most of their day, day eating. That's where those long necks come in handy. From there they make use of that long prehensile tongue. You'll probably see it poke out. Now take a moment to look at your own arm as a giraffe's tongue is about the length from your shoulder to the tips of your fingers. Kind of hard to see, but if you look way back there along the fence, you might just see some African painted dogs. They have a tan and black patchwork coat that allows them to tell each other apart even from great distances. They work together as a team to bring down their prey, making them quite prolific pack hunters. Also coming up here on the left, just past this large bush, you'll see a couple of the sable antelope. Now they should look a little familiar as they are the emblem to the Rambe Wildlife Reserve. Now they were chosen to be the mascot because out in the wild, the sable antelope will use those horns to fiercely defend themselves from predators. That's kind of the energy we wanted to bring here. We want to become fierce defenders, not only the animals here on the reserve, but around the world as well. We do that through fierce conservation efforts. Here we're going to get another closer look at one of the Maasai giraffes. Now, despite how long their necks are, giraffes only have seven neck vertebrae. So that's seven bones there in their neck, which just so happens to be the same number of vertebrae we have in our own neck. Compare them to other long-necked animals, though, like the flamingo. Flamingos have 19 neck vertebrae. Okay, coming up on either side of the road, we're also going to be passing really close to some Hartman Mountain Zebra. Now, you can tell the Hartman Mountain Zebra apart from other types of zebra due to the more pronounced straight pattern that they have there on their hind legs. Another thing that separates these zebras from other types is also the size of their heart. So their hearts are going to be a little larger in size. That's due to them living at higher elevations. Now having that larger heart means that they can more effectively and efficiently pump blood through their system, meaning ultimately more oxygen can be carried through. Now grazing on this hill with the giraffes to our left, you're going to see those two tan animals sitting up near the very top. Now those are the elands. Elands are some of the largest types of antelope. They're about six feet tall at their shoulder. 
both male and female have those horns, but males will use their horns during their mating season to tangle up roots, vines, flowers, really whatever they can to make a flower crown. They do that to impress their lady. But if the lady is unimpressed, she'll actually tear it from his head and he'll have to start all over. All right, now coming around this way, looks like we'll get a couple of chances to see the springbok. A springbok are these small, s'more colored animals. Uh, the springbok are the smallest types of antelope. Don't let their size fool you. The springbok is one of the fastest land animals. They can actually hit top speeds of 50 to 60 miles per hour. Puts them just under what a cheetah can run. A unique way of running too, it's called pronking. Series of leaps and bounds. Where springboks can jump six feet straight up into the air, up to 13 feet forward. Some of the craziest thing about them though, during their mating season, they'll exude a scent pheromone that makes them smell like cotton candy. <laughs> well, here on the right we're passing another one of the baobab trees except this one appears to have some tusk marks in it which tells me that some elephants might have been by to get the water that's stored inside. Now to get the water out an elephant will dig in with their tusk use their long trunk to siphon out the water kind of like a giant juice box. Now, an elephant won't drink directly through their nose. They will fill their trunks up before bringing it to their mouth to drink down like a funny little straw. In fact, an adult elephant's trunk is actually large enough to hold several gallons worth of water. Over here on the left, we're gonna be driving around a pool of the greater flamingo. Now, the greater flamingo are the largest of the flamingos. They're also the palest pink. Now they're not naturally born that pink color. In fact, it takes them about two, two and a half years to turn that shade. Now they get that shade of pink from the foods they eat, which are high in beta carotene. Now, if we were to eat foods high in beta carotene, we wouldn't necessarily turn pink. What see some color change though. Mostly in our fingertips and the corners of our mouth. Instead of turning pink though, those areas would start to turn orange. Right now, coming up ahead here, we're gonna be driving past this mud pit. A mud pits like this can be super beneficial for animals that have more sensitive skin, like elephants or rhinos. Rhinos especially love to wallow in the mud to not only cool down, but also coat their skin in a protective layer. That's because rhinos can actually get sunburned just like we can. So by wallowing in the mud, they're essentially putting on their sunscreen for the day. Speaking of keeping cool, coming up here on the left, we have some nice shaded hills. Good place to keep an eye out for cheetahs. The cheetahs themselves are incredibly fast. They're known for hitting top speeds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. In fact, they can hit 60 miles in just under three seconds. Can't hold those speeds for long, of course. They're really more of a sprinter. Once they hit their top speed, they'll use that long tail of theirs like a rudder, helping to make sharp turns without losing their balance. A fun fact about cheetahs, they are the largest type of cat that still has the ability to purr. <laughs> Back to che cheetah will purr just like your average house cat. Did you Oh, coming up here on the left, we're going to be coming around this rock outcropping here. Rock outcroppings like this are called copies. Copies usually make good vantage points for large predators. This gives some good views over the savanna as well as a good base for their territory. Predators like the lion see them back there. So as we come around the copy, we should be able to get a better look. Now lions are actually more active at night. And that's because during the day a lion's eyesight is actually pretty similar to ours. But at night their vision gets better. 
So during the day, a lion will rest anywhere from 16 to 20 hours a day. Now, when it comes to hunting, it is the lioness who brings home the bacon, sometimes quite literally. The male lion will be the stay-at-home dad who will stay behind to guard the territory as well as any cubs that they have. Well, here's a fun Swahili word for you all. The Swahili word for lion is Simba. So Mufasa really just named his kid Lion. <laughs> I don't know the cool fact about the lion is that when they're roaring at full volume, they can actually be heard from about five or six miles away. So when they really want you to know that they're there, they'll tell you. Eat her instead. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> You're very pretty. She's probably just wondering why we're stopped here. <laughs> And we are stopped here because there is an animal in the road just up ahead of us. So we will be holding here for a little bit. Remember, we're the visitors here. This is the animal's home. So, of course, they're always going to get right of way. And, well, sometimes they decide right of way is right in the middle of the road. We're kind of on their time right now. We're never going to force an animal to be somewhere they don't want to be. Of course, that doesn't mean we can't do anything. You might have seen those green trucks driving around as we pass through the reserve. Those trucks belong to our animal programs team. Now, they're the ones that are in charge of the health and happiness of the animals that you see here on the reserve. Now, they can come and assist by coming up to the animal, usually with their favorite snack. Try and bribe them out of the road. Looks like the male has gone down or just a little further back can't see. Coming up here on the left though, looks like we're going to get a chance to see some warthogs. <laughs> warthogs like Kumba, of course, have those tusks that they'll use to dig out the burrows that you see down low to the ground. Making the warthog the largest burrowing animal. <laughs> now, Pumbaa is also a Swahili word, except it doesn't translate to mean warthog. Instead, it translates to mean silly or foolish. Now, I think we're catching up to the animal that was causing a little bit of traffic. It's just up ahead. We're going to be passing by a whole family of white rhinos. Now, white rhinos get their name not for their coloring, but for the Afrikaans word bite. Now, bite translates to wide, which is used to describe their mouth shape. And it looks like it's our turn to be stopped. <laughs> White rhinos will travel in family groups as compared to other types of rhinos. I'll travel more solitarily. Oh, well, it looks like this one's going to go out in the road now, too. <laughs> oh, all right then. too soon there. Grazing animals. 
Now, if you would like to get a closer look at the Nigerian dwarf goats, I recommend heading over to Rafiki's Planet Watch. And hop aboard the Wildlife Rick's Rest Train, head on over and visit the affection section. I'll get you up close to the Nigerian dwarf goats, as well as some pigs and other animals that you can find while there. I also recommend checking out the animation experience, a 30 minute drawing class that'll teach you how to draw some of your favorite Disney friends. That's right in just under 30 minutes or less, you too can become a Disney artist. But if you're still excited to see even more incredible African animals out here today, be sure to go through the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. I'll take you out to the Okapi, uh, as well as some underwater viewing for the hippos. Maybe if you're lucky, you might even run into the gorilla family that lives over there. My friends, I certainly hope you enjoyed that safari here today. I certainly enjoyed taking you all around. Thank you. Feel free to come back and see us again as every time is a brand new adventure. Enjoy the rest of your day here at